Good afternoon, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our spiritual journey from Lent towards Easter. This is Father Bodge Orara leading you in prayer for our scriptural reflections on our journey. Next day would be the 17th of March. Now, the 17th of March is St. Patrick's Day. That is why I give a pause as far as this is concerned. Friday, the others in other countries, especially Ireland or in certain places in the United States like New York and Chicago, but certainly, especially in Ireland and all the other places where St. Patrick is honored, they will have their celebrations accordingly, but with the, shall we say, the little uh, rules as far as liturgy is concerned in terms of celebrating during the Lenten season. So for us, we will continue with our readings for the day for Friday the 17th of March. From the book of the prophet Hosea, Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed your guilt through your guilt. Take with you words and return to the Lord and say to him, Forgive all iniquity and receive what is good, that we may render as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount, we shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands, for in you the orphan finds compassion. I will heal their defection, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew for Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again, they shall dwell in his shade and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine and his fame shall be like wine, like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I am like a verdant cypress tree. Because of me, you bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord, in them the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. My dear friends, from our prophet Hosea, Hosea is a prophet, you know, he uses a lot of the imagery in terms of uh, the agricultural images you know, so that the people know what is going on. So this is Hosea. The second that I would think that I would like to raise as far as Isaiah is concerned, we take note here of how the people also have termed the use of their own hands, agricultural products, etc., etc., and have actually said to themselves, the God of my hands, that I am a God, that with these hands and with what I do with these hands in this agriculture, then it will produce there will be products, there will be fruits, like with all that, uh, that has been mentioned. Like uh, I stop and say, uh, he shall strike root like the Sebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. <laughs> now, if we have not seen a Lebanon cedar, it will be difficult for us to understand 
what this Lebanon cedar looks like and it's a magnificent tree and it shoots, you certainly will see them. But because of that, people were thinking with my hands, I am a God, I am able to do this. And here Hosea is reminding, there is only one God. It is God, God who makes you prosper. God who gives fruit to all the labor that you do. And that is why he says, I am like a verdant cypress tree because of me, you bear fruit. Because of me, you bear fruit. It is from God. It is God who gives fruit to our labor. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. And this, my dear friends, is a good way of understanding the growth in our stages of the journey of faith. We have to be wise enough how to see how God makes us bear fruit from one stage to the next. We have to be careful, as Hosea is saying, that look at what can happen. We will think that it is by our own doing that there are fruits. Oh, then we will have problems again. There are stages of growth. And remember, it is God who makes them bear fruit. You are watching ATVN Philippines. Emmanuel, the God with us who saves. Our gospel is from the gospel according to St. Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, This is the first. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. Who is the wise man? As Hosea is saying, the wise understands how it is to grow in faith. And here we have this young man, this scribe, who questions Jesus in the smart conversion. It's a questioning that where he wants to understand. It's a prudent question. Wisdom and prudence coming together. Very important. Let me not explain all of that now. But in biblical terms, being wise and being prudent come together. Uh, strikes me now, one of our teachers said, uh, Faith, hope, and charity, and the greatest of which is prudence. Something to reflect on. So here, my dear friends, we have him asking, which is the first of all commandments? Take note, the first of all commandments. He didn't say, which is the greatest of all commandments? He said, the first. And here I like that in the sense that we're not talking of greater or lesser, but the first. And when it's first and you follow it, everything else comes thereafter. So it's not so much as a lesser commandments. Okay? The first. 
and he answers. Jesus gives him the answer which he himself knows. Why? For the people of Israel, they're supposed to pray this three times a day. The, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. You're supposed to pray this three times a day. You're supposed to teach your children this. You're supposed to teach your children and your children's children this prayer. This law, this command, this first of commands, loving God. What else is there to ask? And then the second and final point that I would like to say as far as this gospel reading is concerned, because this is treated also on a regular Sunday in the cycle of Mark, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Here we are. It's a journey again. You are not far. You are journeying toward the kingdom of God. In other words, in this commandment, you have to practice this. You have to live this out. You have to journey with this. And when you do this, you journey closer and closer to the kingdom of God. That is what we do in our spiritual journey from Lent towards Easter. We come closer and closer to Easter. And with every Easter celebration, we come closer to the kingdom of God.